Yes. We would like to welcome you all for our expert session on innovation and entrepreneurship. We welcome all dignitaries on the dais, respected principals and deans of various institutes, faculty members and students. Now, let me give you all a preface of this program. The NMIS uh, Sobers Center of Excellence. Sobers is a platform for a of US based firms, headstrong after two companies merged. Sir is on the board of governors for prestigious institutions, including the Indian Institute of Technology, Foundation Kharagpur, Indian School of Business, Hyderabad, Rajiv Gandhi Institute, Indian Institute of Management, I am Shilong, I am Udaipur, and the Doom School, Dehradun. In addition, he founded Professor G.S. Sanyal School of Telecommunication at IIT Kharagpur. He has also been named as the chairman of Inspired by the humanitarian work of Shri Sri Ravi Shankar. He transitioned to the global headquarters of Art of Living Foundation in Bangalore. Currently engaged in the build, in building Sobas Insight Forum. Now I would like to request Honorable Sri Raj Gopalji Bhandari sir to felicitate our guest of honor, Mr. Malhotra sir. You know, I I like to answer questions. So, you have questions in your mind. Me plan for I am going to take five minutes to tell you a little bit about myself, and then hopefully I will be able to answer questions. So that way, I know ki aapko kya, what you want to learn, what you want to know, and I'll be able to address it much more directly. So, you know, I come from a simple what we call middle class background. Uh, my father was in the army. My mother was a medical doctor, but a teaching medical doctor. She didn't practice. She was in preventive and social health. She's the one reason why I get involved in something like the Indian Institute of Public Health. Uh, you know, army means you go all over. I was born and brought up in Calcutta. I lived most of my now we live in Delhi. Uh, what happened was my father got pulled for the 1960s. My father's family came from Burma. My mother's family came from what is now Pakistan. And so we only lived in cities, Calcutta and Delhi. I of course went to IIT at Kharagpur. Kharagpur is a rural area, but you end up living on your IIT campus, and you don't really, uh, you know, other than using the rickshaw to go to town to have a meal, you don't really do very much else. Uh, I, you know, like most of you, uh, when I finished college, my priority was to get a job. Because my parents were very clear. They told me that when you are studying, you will be able to support your work. You will support your work. One day you will be able to finish it. Then you have to stand on your own feet. And obviously in those days security was very important. So I took a job with the DCM, which is a big textile food conglomerate in Delhi. Worked with them for five years. Got involved in technology. I had done my electronics at Kharagpur and completely rolled it back to make it home uh, till we got to a point where we could afford to have a pay rent for our own office. Right. One of the things that I had noticed, and so there were two incomes with no overhead, no expense. So both me and my younger sister were sent to boarding schools. I ended up at the Doon School in Dehradun. And uh, my mother came back a, month, a year or so later and uh, basically they couldn't afford two children in the morning, so my sister came back to a day school. I have unfortunately... ...as do you do to someone who just start their own business? No. Anyone who starts their own business, my, my advice or my uh, message to them would be hang in there. It is, you know, things take time. Nothing will go as per what you expect or what you plan. Uh, as long as you've done your planning right and you've got it, uh, your proof of concept and it's been verified, uh, you know, just hang in there and listen to the market. Use his emotions. So what you will suggest to him? Okay. So that is the problem that happens all the time. So what happens is a lot of people make products that never can improve the product. You can't, no one is ever going to have the perfect product. It's very much saying, can I wait for all the information before I take a decision? Right. You're never going to get all the information. 
you have to take a decision with the information you have. Right? That's why you say you're taking a risk. Because if you had all the information, then the decision is obvious. The information tells you the decision. Right? So you have to at some point say, I've got a product that's good enough for the market. This is what people can use. Get it out to the market. Differentiate employee and employer and how uh, they uh, play their role in common way. Okay, so I am of the opinion that uh, as people they are not different, but as an employer, I have the responsibility of making sure that my employees are happy and uh, in doing what they're doing. Right? Uh, the the key is, you know, and I'll try and answer this a little differently. So when people become managers, they think of the mother, may have golf and whatever else they want to do. Unfortunately, in my view, the manager's job is harder than an employee's job because an employee does what he can do. A manager has a team of, say, five employees. He has friends in class and you sort of uh, work with them. See, if four of you want to go and see four different movies, try and see if you can persuade all of them to see the movie you want to see and they're happy about it. When you learn that skill, then you know how to carry people along with you when you get I want to say that try and recruit people who are smarter than you and then you have to work with them. And remember when you recruit smart people, you have to... How we integrate our, how we integrate our professional uh, experience uh, into uh, starting strategy? Uh, your professional experience into what? Uh, startup strategy. Startup strategy. Oh, startup strategy. So, one thing, when you work somewhere and you, as you said, professional experience, I presume that you're going to be working in a company or somewhere, right? Again, when you're working somewhere, you know what, how that whole process works in that company. You know what problems are, right? Try and see, is there, is there an opportunity to find a solution, to find a solution to that problem, that, and is there a market for it? How big is it? Right. You also, what is this exercise? Said there's a production tax in India. Anything you make, you have to pay a production cess. So what is it we call the excise inspector? Because there were two alternatives. One is ad volarum, which is a percentage of your invoice. And the other one was transformers, were four annas per kilo. Right, that was how excise is. So we call this excise inspector. He went through the whole excise manual. There was no classification for microcomputer, mini computer, microprocessor based. There was just no classification. So he said, I can't tell you what to do. So he said, what do you mean? I've got to take my machine out, customers paid the money. You know, what do I do? So he said, look, you have to write to your administrative ministry. The administrative ministry will write to the finance ministry. Then the finance ministry will issue the notification. Told him, you mad, two ministries of char paan minat wali jayega. He said, no, this is revenue generating for the government, they'll do it in one day. Okay. So, Department of Electronics had just started. In fact, uh, they were, you know, because electronics was the future, so it had just started. I ask the question, sir, uh, what is the first step to become entrepreneur in school life? Notebooks lete hai, pens lete hai, they are going to be See how, see how effective you are doing things like that. Experience and unique perspective to this gathering. Noteworthy for his dedication to public service. He is not only a TEDx speaker and author, but also a distinguished public servant. Having completed his graduation in economics honors from Delhi College of Arts and Commerce, University of Delhi, and later pursuing his master's in economics from Delhi, School of Economics. His recent accomplishments include the publication of his... And in fact, I think I learned a few things about how to run a startup. Nowadays, you know, governments have become like startups. We are innovating every day and finding new ways to deliver the same thing that we were doing in the license Raj and even now. So, so, so I think it's, it's great to hear from all of you. Uh, one of the people, but I really want to thank uh, uh, the Sober Center of Excellence Chair for Vijayji Ji for inviting me here because after listening to all the students ask questions and the kind of questions that they were asking, it really enlightened me and sort of you know uh, motivated me to look at education in Dhule in a very different perspective. Fortunately, I am in a place where I can do something about education in this district 
and uh, probably this interaction will really help me out in uh, having a different point of view towards how we should proceed about all these things. Uh, I don't think after the interaction that I've already had with, with Mr. Malhotra, I should be uh, talking to you more about motivation. But I do want to tell you two stories, very, very uh, short stories because I think there is a lot lined up. I don't want to take more than five minutes. So I'll quickly tell you just two stories. I am in a town uh, in a part of Parkway district. That time it was Basai, actually, in Mumbai. And uh, from there, uh, my schooling was in Bapi. Okay? And Bapi is again a very small town. It's become, become bigger. It's an industrialist town now. I'm sure Mr. Malusa would have heard about it. All the industrialists actually have heard about it. Uh, but it was pretty, pretty small, and uh, but most of the people it, uh, used to speak Gujarati, you know. And but I did uh, study in a CBC school. From there, I went to Delhi, Delhi College of Arts and Commerce. I started doing my graduation. All right. Uh, but my problem was that I could not speak in English. My, my, I could read it, I could write it, but I could not speak it. But so basically, I understood the language, but I was extremely underconfident to speak English. Okay. So, uh, and I I was very unfortunate to be a part of a South Delhi college. South Delhi is like South Bombay, okay? So, you have to start with English, otherwise nothing can work out for you. So, so I was I was part of a South Delhi college and I started and, uh, you know, all the students were Delhi public school students and all the students were around me. And I was coming. Yes, but uh, I guess all of us have seen your uh, TEDx speech. And we have learned that how to make up our way in our lives and what to do when things don't go as planned. So really thank you so much for giving us such kind words and knowledgeable words. Thank you. His presence and sharing his wealth of knowledge. I thank all the dignitaries for accepting our invitation and giving their valuable time from the schedules. At last, thanks, all, thanks to all the principals of various institutions, faculty members and students. Thank you everyone for the being part of a memorable event. Let the spirit of innovation and entrepreneurship continue to thrive. With the permission of all the authorities, hereby I declare that the closure of this event. Thank you everyone.